Hello and welcome back to another episode of Vazelle's TV and part 20 of this thing. I've got the real-time clock working together with the servo driver on the breadboard. So once a minute that happens. The timing for this is spot on. The mechanism binds up in some places but I'll fix it at a later date. I'm not too worried about it at the moment. That's all keeping great time. In today's episode, I'm going to be transferring the circuitry from the breadboard onto this thing. My, oh my, has it been a week already. Well, here we are, back at the electronic bench. We've got our full circuit. Microcontroller, timing crystal, reset switch, advanced switch. Real time clock and real time clock battery and that crystal. All on here, all nice. And that's going to be moved on to this board. Now, the more keen eyed amongst you may notice that this board has gathered a few more components since you saw it a few episodes back. We've got the real time clock battery holder here, we've got the crystal, we've got both the switches, we have this these pins here for the servos and we've got that's a nice noise Ooh. and we've got this little jumper wire here this little jumper header for programming it so we can unplug that we plug it into a breadboard and plug in this thing if we need to if we need to program it at all so first step is going to be to solder the power and ground lines onto the back and get everything powered up and then test it and then start soldering data lines across. It's a bit fiddly because I need to put in the crystal for the microcontroller. And that's got to go in here. What I might do is put the crystal actually inside this little cavity in here. And the chip can go on top. So let's get soldering some stuff. Oh, we are getting the ball rolling on the rage inducing camera angles. But I think this will work. Got a soldering iron station here. I've got this right in the middle of the frame, and I can see it in the frame because the monitor is just there. So let's get soldering some things. Hmm. I may have ruined this soldering iron tip as well. Trying to desolder some pins from an old circuit board. Hmm. I have spares, but uh, I'd rather not have to swap them out. So I'll see how this one works.
All right, so I've done quite a bit of soldering. On the reverse, I've got all the ground plane. I've got some of the positive power, which are these ones here. I've got to feed that down to the real time clock, which is down here, that side there. But I've hooked up enough wires and the timing chip into the socket for the microcontroller to actually power up the microcontroller. And I've programmed micro with a blink sketch, which will blink this LED. So next up will be to plug this into there, power it up with my LiPo battery, and hopefully it'll work. Right, here we are. Let's jump this across to feed power into this. I've already tested for shorts and everything else. Fantastic. And because it's not attached to a computer via the serial port, it's just completely self-powered. This is it in there. It powers on and runs the sketch straight away. There's no like blinking of anything else. There's no pausing. It will just completely run. So I plug it. Power up again, and that works. So this control crystal, which is inside the sockets underneath everything, and these capacitors there for the timing, the, um, the crystal, that all works, which is really good. So that's exactly what I want. I've hooked up the power and ground to these as well as so I can power up through the this circuit if I, if I need to reprogram this again. So when I eventually make the clock and all of this is in place, I can just plug something into this socket here to programming. I don't have to take this chip out or anything else. So next up will be to finish the ground plane, finish the power plane and start hooking up the data lines and everything else okay after many hours of soldering it is finished we've got all the connections on the back done all right let's plug this into the servos and see if it works all right see so remember what way around these go um, Power is at the top, so it should be this way around. And this one here. I'll rest you on there for now, like that. That's a bit precarious. My power battery goes in here. Servo's moved. Oh, fantastic, okay. So this will go in here. Battery goes in there. There's a reset button, so that should flash this on. Brilliant. And there's the advanced button. Fantastic, okay, let's screw this into here. Well, that fits in there nice. That all works. Reset line, let's just flash that lady on and off. Let's reset everything. Kicks around after a second, will in turbo set, settle down. You have to hold this down because it only fires every second, it will pull this button. Because everything is matched by the ticking seconds of the real time clock. I've also made a programming cable on this, which means I can plug at the end of this into here and program it without having to unplug everything, which is fantastic. So that works brilliantly. Next week I'm going to be starting work on the front half of the case. I wanted to use glass, but it's going to take a bit of job finding somewhere that cuts a custom size of glass. So I'll probably get some perspex and use that, it should be still completely fine. 
and then the next job will be making the hands and then finally the chapter ring that goes around the outside. So tune in next week and I'll start work on the front of the case. Get subscribed so I know when I upload and hit that notification button. Don't forget to like, share and comment and until then I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.